Diabetes is a serious disease and it can lead to many complications such as neuropathies and amputations, blindness, heart disease. And besides maintaining a normal weight and eating a healthy diet that's low in sugar, getting enough exercise, getting enough sleep, adding a little curcumin to our diet, and not sitting for long periods of time, another stud study just came out talking about adding vitamin K to the diet of the elderly that are at risk for diabetes mm -hmm. because that w will lower their risk for getting diabetes. Yeah, so I think, it, isn't it fun though to think that there are all these natural things? Well, that, there are. I mean, vitamin K is something we don't think much about and we don't, we don't make that much of it ourselves. We have to take it from the outside. In fact, what little we do make, we make by, from the bacteria that are in our intestinal tract. They make about 10% of the total vitamin K that we need in the form of vitamin K2. Uh, it, but vitamin K1 is what comes from vegetables, uh, and that's and that's the leafy where, green vegetables. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's where we get most of it. If we don't have enough, we get into lots of problems because we can't heal right. Uh, we get a tendency to develop osteoporosis. The risk for heart disease goes up substantially, and it's why people who are on Coumadin or warfarin oftentimes will have. Uh, an increased risk for getting heart attacks and strokes, which yeah, because surprises you, people. Usually we think of vitamin K for, for clotting. We use it as an anticoagulant. Or for osteoporosis. Yeah, well, mostly we use it as anticoagulation for people who have heart disease and who have strokes, or they have tendencies to clot someplace in their body, like with veins or areas where there's been a lot of trauma or a surgery. But when we do that, we deplete our body of vitamin K. And then we have a problem. And in the mainstream of medicine, we don't really think about that. What we do is we're narrowly focused on what we're trying to do, which is to usually prevent that heart attack or stroke. But what we really should be doing is giving vitamin K with Coumadin and, or, or Warfarin because small amounts still can be overridden by giving more Coumadin and it actually stabilizes the protons, Vicki, so that instead of having a prothrombin time that goes up and down a lot because people are eating different amounts of vitamin K from vegetables, the green leafies, when you go ahead and you, you give people about 100 micrograms or 80 micrograms a day of vitamin K, it doesn't put them at risk for more clotting, and you can still keep the pro times where you want them. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Because many patients, uh, doctors tell them to not even eat leafy green vegetables because they're af afraid if they're on Coumadin, the blood thinner, that the vitamin K might upset the or the offset the, the effects of that. Yeah, so you won't have blood thin, a thinning effect from it anymore. But, you know, common sense just tells you that it's really a healthy thing to be eating leafy green vegetables. Right. And the ones that have vitamin K in them are kale and chard and broccoli and uh -huh. lettuce and spinach. Uh -huh. So those are healthy things to eat. And, you know, if you don't, if you have too much, I guess you could have too much vitamin K. No, you really can't. It's pretty hard to do. It's not toxic in almost any amount. So you can give large doses. I sometimes will give 15 to 30 or even 45 milligrams of vitamin K a day in some people who have advanced osteoporosis. Okay, well, that's good to know then. Yeah, so that you don't have to worry about the toxicity or of making blood too thick. What you do have to worry about when you're using Coumadin is the development of, of course, osteoporosis, which is uniformly a case, and the increased risk of arteriosclerosis and the risk of calcifying your aortic valve. And that all happens within a year or two of being on the drug. So we need to be thinking about other things than just what is in front of our nose. So if we're trying to prevent a heart attack or a stroke because we want to keep blood thinner, Coumadin is not the best way to do it because ultimately you're going to get back in trouble from taking Coumadin with the very thing you're trying to prevent. So the Coumadin can deplete your vitamin K. Exactly. Then you don't have enough to have healthy uh, healthy bones made, nor to keep your arteries clean. And your liver can do that too. Can't the liver deplete your vitamin K? The liver is where you store it, but it doesn't last problem? very long. It only stays there for a few days, so you have to keep taking in vitamin K or you'll run out of it. It's not like vitamin D, where you can store it up for a few months. So it, it becomes a real issue that is massively overlooked in the mainstream of medicine. You know, people that are deficient in vitamin K, I guess, can get nosebleeds and um, uh, blood in their urine and in their stools mm -hmm. and, and bleeding gums and heavy menstrual periods, things sure. like this. So sure. 
Even in the newborn, we see that because mother's milk doesn't have much in the way of vitamin K in it. And so if you don't replace the vitamin K that's missing, these kids often get into lots of trouble with bleeds and sometimes in their head, and it can cause major damage in terms of a, for, in terms of a bleeding stroke. I think that this is the reason that they give newborns vitamin K right away as soon as they're Another born. thing they could do is they could actually measure a level of vitamin K. <laughs> There's a thought, <laughs> rather than injecting it like they do. So when we're looking at, at diabetes and ways to prevent it, uh, we need to know that if we give about 100 micrograms a day, for every 100 micrograms a day that we give to older people who are at risk for type 2 diabetes, their risk uh, goes down about 15%. So make sure that your patients that are older are eating the leafy green vegetables. And if they're on Coumadin, replace that vitamin K as well, because what you're going to be doing is just changing the amount of Coumadin that you need to get the same effect.